It's getting ready to start now. Good morning. This is, Mike. this is Michael Stranahan. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. It's 9.03. Of course, I'd like to um, let everyone who has matters before the commission today know that according to the bylaws, the applicant has the option to withdraw their application without prejudice until such time as there are five members, five members are present. Uh, we are missing one member today, so we do have four seated members here, three in the room, one on the line. Um, they can continue today, um, or they can postpone to another time as a 2-2 vote is considered a negative vote. So that's at the um, option of, of everyone else. Mr. just I just yeah. want to make sure that your mic's on and that you uh, speak really close to okay. the mic. Thank you. <clears throat> we do that again? Yep. Uh, <laughs> I think you're okay. You're okay. Sorry about that. Uh, is there any old business to come before the commission? Okay. Seeing none at this time, um, we'll move on to the first applicant, Tillman on Chesapeake Land Development. I see uh, Brett is here for that. Do you want a decision summary? Oh, decision summary. Yes. It's not on. Oh, I'm sorry. My first time doing this, folks. I apologize. <laughs> Decision summary. It's not like I haven't yeah, seen this before. And um, page one. Page two. Uh, line 70, um, Mr. Shernigan. Um, I believe we have said that line 347 before um, that sentence should be added on the request. Um, I'm talking about I'm referring to, whoops, sorry, my mic wasn't on. Um, I was just referring to line 70 in correcting the last decision summary. I believe we had added um, to line 347 at the beginning of the sentence on request. Any comments? Mr. Gizzi, I'm not showing a line 70. I'm not showing a line 70 either. Um, okay, I'm on, I'm on our decision summary, September 2nd, page 2 of 9. Yeah, we've got a line 70. Are you saying add on to line 70 that, well, um, that line will right. be the next? Line 70 refers to, there's there's nothing there. Correct. You're saying add. I'm sorry. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, it, it's in a junction, it, it's a... Uh, associated with line 69, which says line 346 correct to read to determine the consistency of the comprehensive plan. Um, and it sh we also have added on that line 346 and 347 on the previous decision summary on request. It was. Sorry about that. That makes sense to yeah. me because I wrote it down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other comments on that? Page three, please. Page three. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm at the uh, that bridge uh, on line 105. And uh, on line 123. And uh, after the word occur on 128. Just make it easier to read. No, I'm sorry, we, we yeah, couldn't. Can you say break them into paragraphs? Break them into paragraphs, okay. Those locations. Yes, that, that certainly makes it flow better. Thank you. Anything else on page three? Yeah, I'm going to go to Uh, Bill, you're fading out. Uh, I understood what he was saying. He was repeating what he said a minute ago about the three paragraph breaks. Okay. Okay. We got it, Bill. 
Thank you. Page four. Page five. Page six. Page seven. I'm going to put that now. I'm sorry, I might have it like that. I got page eight. Page eight, yes. Okay. back and see if the, the new line will come in a little better. We will take a break until Commissioner Boycourt gets back on the line. <laughs> Uh, better. Thank you. Much better than the last thing we heard. Right. <laughs> yeah. You were saying something about page eight. I'm sorry. It was not important, but uh, my on my, my, my line 350, uh, 349, excuse me, um, my concern was, uh, it wasn't a major one, was about the restriction of, of the configuration. So I suggest the 500 feet is fine. It's, thought they could spread things out the way they did uh, and, and not uh, have to confine themselves to the square <coughs> configuration. So I'm suggesting that uh, we replace the inquiry about the restriction, right restriction, and insert square configuration there. All right, got it. Thank you. Okay, I have also changed. On line 344, uh, after um, new development, that sentence doesn't make sense as a standalone. So I would add at the end of the sentence, such as Saints Peter and Paul's uh, School and Family Life Center and the synagogue, and is a gateway to Easton. Anything else for page 8? Yes, on line 363, 369, and 374, where it shows SP620, it should be SP622. Anything on page 9? Line 382. Um, Bill, um, it says 
Commissioner Boycourt, wasn't that uh, Commissioner Council that asked that? That's correct. Thank you for pointing that out. Thank you. Anything else on page nine or anything else, period? At this time, I guess we're ready Mr. to Chairman, go. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, accept the... Uh, September 2nd. I move that we approve the September 2nd decision summary as presented second. Uh, and with changes made. Second. All right, um, I guess we need to call for a vote. We have a... Uh, I'm sorry. That's right. I'll call for the vote. Okay. Um, Commissioner Boycourt? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Gezi? Aye. Commissioner Spees? Aye. And Commissioner Stranahan? Aye. Motion is approved 401 with... Mr. Council absent for the moment. Now, now moving along, I, since I got ahead of ourselves earlier, we'll call for new business. Uh, first matter, Forces is Tillman on the Chesapeake Land Development, L1341. Brett Ewing. Okay, thank you. You want a SAT, uh, your SAT report, or you want me to go ahead? Oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Um, so this application is for Tillman on the Chesapeake, Phase 5. The applicant is Tillman Chesapeake Land Development, LLC. The agent is Lane Engineering. The applicant is seeking Planning Commission approval of a major revision plat sketch plan to reconfigure Phase 5 of Tillman on the Chesapeake subdivision from 26 lots to 10 lots and to abandon top sale court, spring line court, and open space for stormwater management. Should the Planning Commission approve the sketch major revision plan, staff recommends the following conditions. The applicant shall make all necessary revisions to Spinnaker Way to comply with road standards. The applicant shall take all of the required steps and acquire all necessary approvals, including any waivers necessary, required for a major revision plat as spelled out in the Talbot County Code. The applicant shall comply with and all address all TAC comments prior to preliminary plat submittal. Right. Now, Mr. Hugh. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, Brett Ewing, Lane Engineering. Uh, thank Brett, you, Maria. Brett, you speak? Yeah. yeah. Is it not right? Yeah, you're good. Is that better? Okay. Um, so, yeah, here representing Tillman, uh, Chesapeake Lane Development, LLC, as Maria mentioned. Um, it is a major revision plat. Uh, the current subdivision exists in 26 lots. We're proposing to reduce that to 10. Uh, the property is located at Spinnaker Lane, uh, Spinnaker Way, Tillman Island. Uh, again, as, as Maria mentioned, um, it's a reduction before we're eliminating a couple cul-de-sacs that were associated with the original um, subdivision approval. The, you know, the main purpose of this is, is to meet kind of market demand. Right now, I think the lots are a little small for the market. But in doing so, we also are coming into compliance with the current zoning regulations. You know, the 2018 um, update to the Talbot County Code uh, included some changes to the village centers, and this included the BM that we're in in Tillman, the village mixed um, district. And a couple of those regulations that we are now coming into compliance with is the minimum lot size, which is 30,000 square feet. The lots of record are smaller than the minimum uh, which they're grandfathered in, but still, it's, we're bringing that into compliance. The minimum lot width standards, we're coming into compliance with that. And uh, the density, uh, which is you know, one per one acre, one unit per one acre, we're actually going to be in compliance with that too, with this reduction in revision. Uh, so kind of with that being said, <clears throat> you know, I know we, we've come before the Planning Commission twice now. We, we came back, and I believe it was May, uh, the commission had some concerns with the density that we were bringing it down to. So we went back and kind of redesigned and, and increased it to 10 lots, which I think is a perfect number. It meets the, the criteria of the code. Uh, it meets the kind of the, the market demand and it meets the needs of the owner. Um, we're also keeping the uh, Spinnaker way or lane as a public right away. Uh, the lots will be served by public sewer. 
and they will have a private well. Uh, so overall, you know, I think it's an improvement. Larger lots meets the, the density, which in turn meets um, you know, the intent of the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan provides guidelines that turn into zoning regulations often, and I think complying with zoning in turn makes us in compliance with the comp plan. So, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I did have one question, Mr. Ewing. Um, on, on our report, it says to correct the right of way width and an adequate turnaround for cul de sac required by code. Uh, and maybe maybe um, Maria could help answer this. Um, I, I, what exactly is that turnaround point requirement? So, the Mike Myrtle. Um, should be preparing comments um, regarding the what exactly is required since it will be public and not private. Um, but my understanding is that there should be a cul-de-sac of some kind if it is a public road and the right-of-way should be 60 feet wide um, instead of 50. Okay. Yes, yeah, we're aware of that. that. That was a tack comment that we just haven't had a chance to address. But we are in close communication with Public Works to design the road and the right of way as as required. Yeah. It just seemed odd because where the um, development is, the ten lots, is that there's a, a through street and yes. there's not an end. So I yeah, I, it's it's going to probably um, cut into revised lot six. Okay. Um, and and it doesn't have to. In, in discussions with Public Works, it, it doesn't have to be your typical circular cul-de-sac. I think you can have a hammerhead design as long as it's a, a functional turnaround. I mean, I think there's been some concerns with some turnarounds in the last decade or two that don't quite meet the needs or functionality of, of folks that are using it. So I think it's really just, you know, design it to be functional. I don't think it has to be any more than that. Well, I appreciate you working with us. Um, I know we've seen you in May and in July. Yes. And it's been an iterative process, but I think a very productive process where you work very closely with the planning office and have gotten our feedback. So thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Uh, Brett, this is Bill. Um, I, I appreciate what you do, as, as uh, Lisa said. Um, the only question, and I sort of mentioned this before, but it's a it's a future issue. Uh, I wonder if there's engi any engineering things you can do with, with aside from building dams uh, to um, protect the properties with regard to high water uh, and storm surge. I mean, it's a pretty low lying territory. I suspect that part of it was underwater during Isabel. Not that we have Isabel every day, so. I'm not sure what can be done, but you might have some ideas or, or could come back later in the next iteration to talk about that. Yeah, I mean, certainly when each lot is developed, we would have to, you know, for each house that's built, where we would design it to, to meet the whatever regulations are required. I think for the most part, this property is not, it's not in the flood zone. And I think the low area you're referring to, Bill, and I could be wrong, is the area a little further down Spinnaker Way where it turns into like a causeway leading to those three or four lots at the very end. This is this is a little bit higher on this end where it's a, it's an active farm field. So it's a little bit higher, it's, it's not in the critical area. And I think there's just a small portion of the flood zone is on the very kind of northern tip of uh, lot 10. Um, so, I mean, I, 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 I understand your concern though, and we will certainly look at that. Yeah, I mean, I just see, uh, I see five and six foot contours uh, on lot uh, two, and uh, and, and uh, I, they're, they're not particularly high. Uh, sure. The um, uh, storm surge at, at Cambridge was measured at 5.7. Uh, so you know that that part might have been underwater there, but not not a lot. And and uh, I recognize this is uh, not. I, I I don't think we ought to stop uh, development here for that reason. I just wanted to. If there, and, and you can tell me later uh, whether there's some mitigating um, uh, without building mounds in the middle of uh, on the building envelopes yet. Uh, how, what can be done to help prevent damage from uh, storm surge? Anyway, yeah. that's the only question I have. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Spees, do you have any? No, I've seen this a few number of times, so very comfortable with it that, that you've worked with the 
planning office to get it to this point. So. The only question that I have um, goes back a little bit to um, the Skezzi's question on the roadway and the public right of way. See all the things you changed. When we were originally talking about this back in May, yes. when it was still a 26 lot subdivision, um, and I'm just looking for some clarification here. I'm sure I know the answer already. But this um, it's going to be widened and brought up to public road standards period at the expense of the um, developer. And is, it, is the intention still at some point to turn this over to the county yes. as a public road? Yes, it is. Okay. Yep. Yeah. It's um. Yeah, there's there's minimum standards that the um, the roads ordinance calls for. It also provides some um, I guess you can call it waiver provisions by the county engineer to allow reductions in those minimum specs. Um, again, we've had some communications with Public Works about that, and and I think we can we can provide a uh, design that meets the needs of the county and is compliant with the county. And uh, also, is is doesn't you know break the piggy bank of, of our client. So I think to answer your question, yes, it's going to remain, or we will eventually uh, want to dedicate this um, and have it accepted by the county. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any other questions? Are there any um, questions or comments from anyone on the line? I'm sorry. Let me. Uh, we have one person on the line. Let me unmute him, please. Okay. Are there any uh, questions or comments from anyone online about this project? Okay, hearing none. Um, I move that the Planning Commission approve L1341 major revision plan, sketch plan for Tillman on the Chesapeake Phase 5, subject to staff conditions. I'll second it. Second. Okay, we have a um, motion by Commissioner Gessie and a second by Commissioner Spees. Uh, uh, Miguel, will you call for the vote, please? Sir. Commissioner Boycourt? Aye. Commissioner Gessie? Uh, aye. Commissioner Spees? Aye. Commissioner Strangan? Aye. aye. Motion's approved uh, 401 with uh, Commissioner Council absent for the vote. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Again, if we can take a uh, couple of minutes break, uh, we'll be right back with things. Thank you. back. Um, we'll move along to um, second application B, McMiles LLC, file number L132, Sean Callahan presenting Lane Engineering. And um, Lisa, you'll leave your up. Yes, thank you. Uh, the applicant is Miles McMiles LLC in care of Mike McCarthy. The purpose the applicant is seeking planning commission approval of a major revision plat sketch plan to propose line revisions between seven lots of record, lots 43 through 49, with the abandonment of lots 45 and 49 to create five buildable lots that the applicant intends to be served by public sewer. The location is map 24, parcel 118, lots 49, or excuse me, 43 through 49. The location is Rest Circle and Unionville Road. Recommended conditions, 
Should the Planning Commission approve the sketch major revision plan, staff recommends the following conditions. The applicant shall take all of the required steps and acquire all the necessary approvals, including any waivers necessary required by the major revision plan as spelled out in the Talbot County Code. The applicant shall comply with and address all additional com TAC comments from the September 9, 2020 meeting prior to plat preliminary plat submittal. Thank you. Callahan. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Sean Callahan, 117 Bay Street. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Michael McCarthy uh, are the entities that uh, own the LLC, and they actually live right across the street from the Sean. project. Sean. Uh, do you all have the little exhibit, yes. uh, development envelope exhibit with the green yes. stuff on it? So if you look in the, uh, got it, reading uh, left to right, uh, you see in the uh, middle uh, left hand, McMiles LLC owns parcel 118 lot C1. Off, off the property, sort of uh, on the north side of Rest Circle. So that's where McCarthy's house is. So they, they own a, a waterfront house on that side of the street. And then they have these seven lots on the south side of the street. And they have four kids. So the idea was to uh, re-subdivide the seven lots into five, keep um, revised lot 43, as a, uh, a lot that the family would hold and then give each of the four kids a, an individual lot so that you know in the, in the future they could all be down here and, and that's the intent um, you'll also notice that from uh, 370 from highway 370 unionville road there's a 100 foot setback <clears throat> so that that area is really unusable for development per se um, the building envelopes are, you know, generally the, the same size, about 75 feet wide and about 300 feet long. So that's a, a fair amount of area to build in. Um, parcel uh, lot 43 is a little narrower, um, but we did give uh, that lot, we call it a, a, a pipe stem or panhandle along the back property line uh, against rest lane simply to give that lot more available acreage to calculate and perfect surfaces from so uh, you know when you do build a, a house on these smaller lots you get to the 15 percent lot coverage pretty quickly with a driveway a house a garage let's say um, you, you start to eat up ground quickly with the driveway so we were looking for a way to Keep all of the lots, you know, give them a, a fairly decent building envelope and provide some equity for building envelope, but also be able to build a reasonable sized house on each. Um, the intent was to uh, meet the 15% forest cover requirement by planting the, the hatch shaded area against uh, Rest Lane, or Wright's Rest Lane and 370. Staff believes that uh, actually planting on the lots, so each of the lots at 15% forest cover building permit is required, and I think that's right. Um, so we, we will have to plant some trees on the lots so at the time of building permit. I'm sorry, can you make sure you're speaking louder into the mic? Say that again? Can you make sure you're speaking louder into the mic? Okay. The uh, county council has uh, agreed to extend sewer service to these lots, but there is additional process at the state level to get the lots um, served by sewer. And I believe we have a requirement to uh, wait to preliminary plan. 
the county has asked us to uh, wait to preliminary to, to make sure we have those sewer uh, agreements from the state before we come back from preliminary. And so the long and the short of it is go from seven to five lots, generally uh, equal area of building envelopes. And um, that's what the project is. Thank you. Do we have any questions or comments from the commission? I do. Commissioner Gessie. Yes, um, Mr. Callahan, I'm a little uh, confused. If we're looking at the drawing you just gave us, just with the green colors are always helpful. Um, starting with the top one, well, let's start with the bottom one. That's 43, correct? Yes. That has proposed sewer. It does, yes, it does. 44 and 46 have existing sewer. And 47 and 48 have proposed sewer. Well, <clears throat> um, there were two of the seven lots that had sewer allocation. Um, the county council agreed to three more connections. So I don't know that it matters particularly which lots have sewer. They will all, they all have an allocation now, but to get the, uh, actually physically make the connection, we have to get uh, state approval. Okay. And the reason I ask that is reading the resolution by the County Council 283, um, the, there's an inconsistency, and I'm not quite sure which is right. On page 3 of 5, section 2, it says lots 46, 47, and 48 are lots authorized to receive sewer connections. So that would be consistent with what you said. Actually, yeah. it would be inconsistent because you said 36 is, it has an existing. So if they're authorized to receive sewer connections. Well, I think at the end of the day, there were two authorized connections and three proposed, and the three proposed were uh, granted. So we have five after we get state approval. So you have two existing, 43 and 44. Right. No, you have two existing, 44 and 46. You have 43 and 44. Okay, I'm just, on this it says 43 is a proposed sewer, 44 is an existing sewer. So, yeah, it says it right here. Proposed on 43 and existing on 44. I just, you know, from a paperwork perspective, you know, the consistency should be, inconsistency should be worked out. Well, I think that's just the connection, the physical connection. Even 43, if it had a, a right that was allocated, a right, there is, there's no building there, so there's no physical connection. If I'm not mistaken, is that correct, Sean? Yeah, if you want to turn to the, let's get away from the uh, green shaded exhibit and okay. go back to the flat for a minute. five connections, I think 
that's what counts at the end of the day. Okay. What you're saying is that before the houses are built, every lot will have a not only allocation but a sewer connection, that's so they'll right. all be served by public. That's sewer. right. There's there's no uh, sewage disposal areas or on-site sewer posts. Um, they'll all be served by county sewer. Okay. And do you have a lot 49? Or are you abandoning that? Uh, we're abandoning two lots. 45 and 49. general notes on this page, I just it just seems like there's some things that are inconsistent because it says here, lots 44, this is in the general notes, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 line down, lots 44 and 46 have existing sewer connections and lots 43, 47, and 49 will receive sewer connections. From what I understand, you just said 49 is going to be abandoned, so that should say 47 and 48. It's just confusing. Um, two lines down, it said uh, lots 43 to 49 are denied access to Wright's Rest Lane. Um, is, if 49 is being abandoned, why would that even be there? Um, and then later on, down under development rights, under lot 44, um, does 44, doesn't 44 already have a dwelling on it? It does currently. Okay, so here it says de development rights utilized here on zero, development rights remaining one. Wouldn't that be flip flopped? <clears throat> Probably. There's no one living in that. But it is a development right we use. Yes, that's correct. That's all. Mr. Boycourt, do you have any questions or comments? Yes, I mean, I want to say that uh, the shot that I have no trouble with the, the suggestion. Uh, layout, it, it seems reasonable. Um, my my, my uh, truck is not with uh, this proposal. It was with uh, uh, Resolution 283. And I, I clearly was at the switch, I was for the switch, I guess, when it came out. It seems to be, I'm leaving else's remembrance that um, this area was, two, uh, these are tier 3C designations and although the you know, the, the county council was careful to keep the this may be um, eligible for sewer is it not my uh, uh, remembrance that that we didn't intend to uh, 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 leave Billy, you faded out there. What's that? You faded out there. We missed that last point on uh, resolution two eighty three. Yeah, the, the, the concern primarily is that the weather that we intended, even though it's tier three C, to, to uh, support uh, the new development uh, here, and, that, and these are new, and even though there are lots of records, so that's a landlord point. It's not a comment on this application per se, because that by the county resolution and by the state if approval from the, uh, uh, then things are okay legally. But I just uh, I'm a bit grumpy about that. Maybe I should about the develop the new development aspect of um, of putting sewer in that area. The uh, that's all. You know, the project's been mapped as a sewer service area under under the maps that had been available since sewer was brought to that portion of the county. Um, I think the flying ointment was... I didn't get... The, the, the property's been mapped as a sewer service area since the sewer was brought to that area of the county. I think the flying ointment was <laughs> that it was... The, the lots were all wrapped up in, in one deed 
so that when the original uh, investigation was done by the county to provide lots with sewer, um, there was an oversight and these lots should have been granted a sewer allocation originally. Um, the original uh, sewer agreements allow lots that were missed to come back and request allocation. And that, that happens from time to time, and, and that's what happened in this case. Uh, these lots were shown on the original uh, plats of record as part of the rest. Um, I've got them with me. I think they were like in the 50s. So there's not really any new development. It was sort of just an oversight based on the way the deeds were written. They weren't under separate holding. They were under one owner. And uh, they remain under one owner until they're uh, you know, deeded to the, to the children. That's, that's the intent. I appreciate that, uh, Sean, and, I, and I, that makes me feel better. In addition, I mean, this whole area through you know, all that, not just this, 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 these lots, but all the way over to Avery, were um, designated as uh, area, areas for sewer sort of back in 2016. So my, my, my complaint is a weak one, and, and uh, I need to go back and do some research. But in this case, I have no um, complaint about this particular application. Mr. Spees, do you have anything? I'm good. I have no questions or comments at this time. Does any um, one on the line or in the room have questions or comments? Hearing none, we can uh, entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the major, Scott, major sketch uh, revision plan approval for L1332 for McMiles LLC, um, Rest Circle, Easton, Maryland, with all staff conditions being compliant. I'll second it. Okay. I'll we second have it. we have a motion by Commissioner Spees mm -hmm. and a second by Mr. Gezzi to approve. Uh, Gail, we can call for the vote, please. Commissioner Boycourt? Aye. Commissioner Gezzi? Aye. Commissioner Spees? Aye. Commissioner Stranahan? Aye. Motion's approved 401 with council absent for the vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Moving right along to item C, third on our agenda. It's um, applicant Gary Blanche filed MV38 for a minor variance recommendation. 24030 Portis Creek Lane, St. Michael's. I think we are back to you. So the applicant is Gary and Melinda Blanche. The um, applicant is seeking planning commission approval of a minor variance to construct a 13 foot 6 inch by 33 foot 4 and a half inch pervious deck addition on the rear side of an existing single family dwelling and located no closer than 69 feet from mean high water. The property address is 24030 Porter's Creek Lane in St. Michael's. Should the Planning Commission recommend approval of the minor variance, staff recommends the following conditions. The applicant shall apply for and receive approval of a buffer management plan that complies with all requirements of the critical area law the applicant shall execute a pervious deck agreement prior to issuance of a building permit and shall comply with the standards of pervious construction and landscaping per the requirements of the agreement. The applicant shall make an application to the Office of Permits and Inspections and follow all rules, procedures, and construction timelines as outlined regarding new construction. And the applicant shall commence construction of the proposed improvements within 18 months from the date of the planning office's notice to proceed. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, Gary Blanche, uh, 24030 Porter's Creek Lane. 
uh, just seeking approval to build a deck off of an existing dwelling that was built back in 72 that still remains in the same footprint at that point, from that point, um, no closer to the water than the dwelling that's already existing. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Debbie, any questions or comments? Uh, no questions, thank you. Commissioner Boycourt. No, I think this is a reasonable uh, request. I'm, I'm, I'm in favor. Commissioner Spees. No, I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Do we have any uh, questions or comments from the public, online or in the room? None, I, I assume. Yeah. Yes. Chairman, I make a uh, recommendation to the planning office to approve the minor variance uh, for Gary Blanche, um, file number MV38 at location 24030, Porter's Creek Lane, St. Michael's, Maryland. Staff being I second that. We've had a motion to approve by uh, Commissioner Spees and a second by Commissioner Jesse. Uh, Miguel, will you please call for the vote? Commissioner Boycourt? Aye. Commissioner Gezzi? Aye. Commissioner Spees? Aye. Commissioner Strenian? Aye. Motion's approved 401 with Mr. Council absent for the vote. I think my mic's lost power. Oh. Thank you. Um, we we're um, going to take a, a brief break while we uh, power up the Thank mic. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we are back with um, item D on our agenda. David Medford, MV34, request a minor variance recommendation to 10445 Forest Garden Road, Cordova. Mr. Flo, I'll move it back to you. The applicant is David W. Medford. The purpose, the applicant is seeking planning commission approval of the minor variance to reduce the side yard setback from 50 feet to 43 feet to construct a garage. The location is 10445 Forest Garden Road, Cordova, Maryland. Recommendations should the Planning Commission recommend approval of the minor variance, staff recommends the following conditions. One, shall the applicant shall make an application to the office of permits and inspections and follow all rules procedures and construction timelines as outlined regarding new construction and two the applicant shall commence construction of the proposed improvements within 18 months from the planning office's notice to proceed thank you mr medford Yes, good morning. Um, I'm just here to apply for a variance to construct a garage. I've been in the property for 25 years, and the existing shed is well beyond its usefulness, and it's too small. And I'm looking to build a, uh, a, new, a new barn. 
Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments from the commission? Mr. Uh, Gilbert? Mr. Medford, hi. it's so nice to see you today. Um, I had met Mr. Medford when I went out to the property. I did ask you a question, but I just wanted to clarify. In terms of the, the ownership on each side, as you're looking at your the shed, existing shed, there's the farm field in back, yep. and then there's a home to the right. Is that all owned by the same property owner? No. No, okay. So you're asking for the variance um, directly in back with the farm field, and that's the, the person who had, um, recommended the pole barn to you. Is that correct? Yes, Okay, I just wanted to um, clarify that the neighbor that is um, being affected on the property line is aware of it. So, great. Thank you so much. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Good point. Good question. Um, Commissioner Boycourt, do you have any questions? Uh, I think this is uh, I, I, I think this is fine and there should be no problem, in my opinion. Mr. Spees. Yeah, just the, on the, is the 43 feet including the 10 foot drainage utility or is it, is it 43 feet from the sh new shed to the, to the drainage line? What's that? To the property line. Okay. I'm comfortable with it. Hey, I'm comfortable with it. So at this time we can entertain a motion. Oh, excuse me. Moving ahead of myself again, I apologize. Anyone on the line or in the public who has a comment or a question? Mr. Chairman, I make a recommendation to the planning office to approve the, mary the minor variance for uh, David Medford at 10445 Forest Garden Drive, Port of Maryland with all staff conditions. I second that motion. Okay, we have a motion for approval by Commissioner Spees and a second by Commissioner Jesse. Miguel, we please call for the vote. Commissioner Boycourt? Aye. Commissioner Gezzi? Aye. Commissioner Spees? Aye. Commissioner Strenia? Aye. Motion is approved 401 with Commissioner Council absent for the vote. Thank you. Can now move along. Are there any discussion items? None at this time. So staff matters. Update on flood plan and community rating system CRS program. We're going to let Greg start with an overview of where we are with this year's. Then I might give a little bit of a history of how we got to where we are with the flood plan program. Thank Greg you. Is our flood plan coordinator. Greg. Good morning. Um, the Community Rating System, or CRS, is a voluntary incentive program that recognizes and rewards community flood plain management that exceeds minimum requirements set by the National Flood Insurance Program. When the community exceeds the level of excellence set by the program, the risk of flooding decreases and businesses and homeowners reap the benefits with lower insurance premiums, the discounts of which are determined by the community's class rating. Participation in the CRS requires annual maintenance to include documentation, public outreach, and other floodplain management activities. Talbot County's unincorporated areas were brought in the CRS Class 8 in October 2014. This class rating gave all qualifying flood insurance policies for properties located in the Splashville Flood Hazard Area, or SFHA, a 10% discount, as well as gave properties not located in SFHAs either a 5% discount or eligibility for a preferred risk policy. The staff is pleased to announce that effective October 1st, 2020, Talbot County's unincorporated areas have been confirmed as a Class 7 in the CRS. <coughs> this new class rating will result in a 15% discount for all qualifying flood insurance policies issued or renewed on or after October 1st, 2020 for properties in Talbot County's unincorporated areas located in the Special Flood Hazard Area. Properties not located in the SFHAs will continue to receive the same benefits as before. As a result of moving to Class 7, each policyholder in the A flood zone will save about $194 per year and for a total savings of $91,513, up from $129 per policy and $61,009 total previously. Thank you. Uh, do we have any uh, questions or comments from the commission? Yeah, I was just um, curious, Mr. Ellis. 
What is the process now for homeowners who qualify in this new category? Are they notified? Do they have to um, initiate the request? How does that all work? Um, from my understanding, it's just when their policy is renewed um, after October 1st, they will automatically get that discount. We will, and actually next week we're going to the county council <coughs> with the same information. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and after that, we're going to put out a press release so that homeowners know. So the homeowners, it, the the insurance company will already be notified automatically. The homeowner doesn't need to do anything. That's right. right. It goes to the insurance company through FEMA. Okay. Ms. Berger, I believe you said you had some comments. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I just wanted to note that this is our plaque for this year. Um, that shows we are a class seven versus a class eight that we were previously. Um, this doesn't really come easy. There's a lot of hard work to get these. There's a very limited number of communities in the state of Maryland that actually participate through this. Um, so we started in 2013 with a grant through NOAA and DNR that allowed us to update our flood and floodplain management ordinance. And we added some higher regulatory standards within that ordinance that gave us the points that you need to be rated through FEMA and the flood insurance program. Um, we were able to get a class eight on our initial application and that was effective in 2014. And that included the information that we required for elevation certificates. We did huge outreach programs to get points. Um, and as noted, the higher regulatory standards, which were, we adopted the coastal A zone and the LIMWA, the limit of moderate wave action. FEMA is full of acronyms, so when I'm talking about them, I have to say a lot of ABCs. Um, but we did a lot of uh, projects that provided us with points. In 2014, we were at 1,391 points for each 500 points, you go up a class. So we felt that we weren't too far away from being able to reach the next class. So in moving forward, we worked to obtain another grant and we were able to establish our online mapping services. Um, and that is something that is very important to public county citizens as well as anyone that's visiting or looking to purchase in Talbot County because that mapping resource that is on our Talbot County website allows you to look at different things such as um, historic flooding, road closures. Um, you can look at an elevation certificate for every elevation certificate that has been submitted since the year 2000. Um, when you look onto that mapping it will show you the specific elevation certificate for an individual piece of property. So with that increased mapping efforts, um, that allowed us to get additional points and to show those additional floodplain information, we were able to get show more open space requirements where we're doing protection, stormwater management protection, and that allowed us to go over the 1,500 points for this year and be a class seven. So and I much appreciated the work that Greg and others have put into getting us to where we are and you know, it's, a, it's a very good honor for Public County. Thank you very much and thank all of you, thank Greg, thank everyone involved in this um, for the hard work because it is a great service to the citizens of Crawley County and on a personal note from um, I believe and I'm sure all the other commissioners agree that we're very fortunate in the county to have uh, the dedicated professional staff that we do, putting in the time and looking at ways, um, not just what comes across your desk, but in ways to reach out such as this to improve the lives of our citizens here. Commissioner Boycourt, do you have any questions or comments? Well, I want to add to all the, all the thanks. I mean, there's a personal benefit here. I was, I, I stand to say it with money here, and I, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Spees. No, just a second. We, we, you've said that it is a good work, and I, from the, from the start, it, it's taken a lot of effort and time and staff time and, and dedication. So we appreciate it as a county. Thank you very much. Anything else on this matter?
Yes, I just want to say thank you as a um, separate from my um, commissioner role as a master gardener because we actually utilize these when we do um, on-site um, Baywise consultations with our clients, which are homeowners throughout Talbot County, and it's been very helpful. Great. Yeah. All right. That being said, moving along, uh, I don't see anything under work sessions. Do we have anything that's come up? No, but I have one or two other quick staff matters. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's not on the agenda, but I just wanted to let you know that Talbot County has hired a part-time county attorney, Renata Matera. She will be joining us at the November meeting. I'm not sure at this point whether it will be physically or at least online, but um, we would like to introduce you all and, and have her um, meet the planning commission members. She's part-time, she's from Tillman Island, and she will be helping Tony in the Office of Law and has already um, been working with us on several planning projects, so it's been great to have someone filling that role. Great, thank you. Yes, we'll be look forward to welcoming, welcoming her to our meetings. Anything else in that? Um, we did ask Mr. Boycourt, and I'm kind of putting him on the spot here. There is a um, application from the Maryland Planning Commission Association um, to have some sponsorship for members who have done great things in their community. We'd like to see if we can get an interview with Bill. It's just two minutes or less, and you submit that to the Maryland Planning Commissioners Association, um, and they will put that on, on their virtual meeting that's coming up next month. So we'd like to see if we can maybe get him to do something with us. I mean, he's been on the commission now for 20, 21 years, uh, a long time. So we'd like to honor that and, and having work with us to do something as a submittal for the planning commission. I'm Mary Kay, I'm, oh, this is Bill. I luckily didn't hear much of that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I appreciate it. And uh, I'm trying to represent, if, if we manage it, uh, the whole commission. Great, thank you. Thank you, congratulations, Bill. Anything else? I just have one other thing, just to let the planning commission know. Um, I have submitted my paperwork to retire as of December 31st. So after a very lengthy career in Columbia County, I will be leaving at the end of the year. So I appreciate working with each of you and be here for the next two meetings. But it's been a pleasure working with each of you. You will be sorely, sorely missed. I'm sure the, the staff will move on. We do have a great staff and people. Yes. I know you wouldn't make this move if you didn't feel Ted caught me off guard here, but if you didn't feel <laughs> comfortable that it were, we were all in good hands moving forward, but uh, uh, we'll have to savor the next two meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, um, Mary, Mary Kay, I didn't get that either. Is this, this sounds important. If you didn't hear it, it's not going to happen. <laughs> good. <laughs> well, I, 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 it sounded important and, and it sounded portentous and, and awful. So what, what was, or, or can you repeat that please just for me? Uh, As of December 31st, I will no longer be with Talbot County, um, but I have certainly enjoyed working with you and the other planning commission members and I'm going to go enjoy retirement for a little bit. Uh, I, I, that is shocking news and, and I don't know what to do with it, but I, uh, <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll react to that. I'll give you two months to digest. <laughs> wow. I'm not sure, I'm sure that's not long enough. You will, <laughs> you will be sorely this. This is shocking news as well. Wow. And that's all. Okay, Can't thank you. Because that. we've been going, we, we <laughs> dropped, went downhill really quickly there. Thank you. Um, anything else under work sessions or commission matters? Great. With that being said, we will adjourn at 10.07. Thank you. <laughs>